Welcome back to the Pittsburgh Basketball Show. Today's Friday, August 9th. I'm George Michalowski with PSN. Today we don't have a guest on the show, but I did look into, spent a lot of time looking into Synergy this week, looking at different pieces on Pitt's basketball roster. So today I'm going to be talking about what I found. Uh, and specifically with the front court, we're talking Cam Corin, Guillermo Diaz, Graham, Andy and Amdi Njai, and Papa Amadou Kante as well. They've got some stats from their high school careers on there, uh, while Guillermo and Cam have stats from this past season. So I want to get into the front court. I will probably be recording if you guys like this one a back court edition. So let me know after this episode if you guys want to hear more. Uh, about these stats that I know a lot of coaches look into synergy. Uh, I had the chance to to get in there and, and take a peek around today and this week and uh, really excited. I think if, if you're a pit fan, you, you've got to be excited about the, uh, you know, addition of Cam Corhan. Uh, it, when you look at his stats, like nine points a game and three, four rebounds a game, doesn't jump off the page, but looking at some of this stuff, really you know makes you think like he can be a really big piece really important piece for Pitt I know Pitt's staff is really excited about Cam I talked to Jeff the other day and he was talking about how Cam will have a lot of freedom here um, and how he can pass the ball how he can shoot the ball Uh, he didn't have a lot of that in his role at Florida State but I think we're going to see a really dynamic guy uh, playing the five for Pitt this year Um, alongside Guillermo Diaz Graham I don't think we would have you know, seen a, a too big lineup in the past few years just because of depth reasons um, and the play style. But this year they've got that depth. If Papa can come back and come off the bench and give them some minutes and, and be a bruiser down low, I think it could be really interesting. So I'm going to get right into it. We're going to start with Cam. Um, I tried basically what I was trying to do here was pick one stat that stood out about everyone on the pit roster. Uh, I quickly realized that that would be too long for what I like these shows to be. So just going to focus on the front court guys. And it was still hard to just choose one stat. Um, but Synergy has this really cool, uh, you know, feature that shows the different play types, different possessions that these guys played in. Uh, so Cam Corin, he sticks out in that last year. When you look at his stats at Florida state, he sticks out in his role as a pick and roll roll man. So we've saw it all of last year, all the past few years for Pitt. I guess ever since Federico got here, tons of pick and rolls in the offense, uh, whether it's Bub, Jalen, Ish, running those pick and rolls last year, uh, along with Fetty, along with some of the other forwards, wings on Pitt. You had Hinson popping a lot. You had Diaz Graham popping a lot. So there's a lot of different opportunity last year with, with those guards and what they did. With Jalen and Ish coming back, with Damian Dunn, uh, Amzal Delalich, there's a lot of opportunity here. Uh, and then you look at these numbers. So Cam Corn as the pick and roll role man last year, he had 63 points in that role. He 1.4 points per possession. I know that's a stat that a lot of coaches like to look at. He was in the 92nd percentile as the pick and roll role man um, with 1.4 points per possession. Went 29 for 40 from the field in that role, 73%. Really impressive numbers and, and only a 4.4% turnover rate in these situations. Um, and if you go a little bit deeper, as the roll man, most often he was rolling to the basket. As you could imagine by looking at his tape, um, he was in those opportunities. He was 18 for 24 finishing, obviously really good again. Uh, when he slipped the screen, he was 9 of 13 from the field. So pretty solid again. Like when he is rolling, when he's slipping off these screens at the top of the key, crashing down in the lane, he's pretty efficient. Uh, we've seen Pitt's bigs excel at that and, and really use those slips over the past few years. I actually think of the, the Duke game last year, the first play of the game at Duke when Blake Hinson hit those nine threes uh, or eight threes, nine threes, and, and they won down to Cameron. First play of that game, Federico came up to set a screen for Jalen and slipped the screen, got right to the basket, got some leverage um, on Filipowski's right hip, went up for a slam, got him started. Uh, we all know how that one ended. So, um you know, he's he's good in the rolls. He's good in the uh, slipping and, and rolling to the basket. Um, pick and pops, he didn't really, like I said, didn't really do that last year at Florida State. He was two for two on synergy uh, and plays that they categorized as pick and pop. Didn't, none of those were three-pointers. Um, but Cable has talked about him being able to shoot the ball. So um, really impressive numbers for Corin in the pick and roll uh, as the roll man. And I think if, if you've watched any pit basketball over the past few years, they're going to really, really emphasize that again this year. There's going to be tons of pick and rolls. It's attractive to players. It's attractive to recruits. And you have so many options. Looking at um, the other bigs, looking at the guards, like 
thinking of Jalen Lowe and Cam Corrin, uh, who were AAU teammates four or five years ago, by the way, um, in the pick and roll together this year at Pitt is is fun. It's it's awesome to think about. So I'm excited to see it happen. Um, and then they have another opportunity here with Guillermo Diaz Graham. Um, looking at his stats in that same role as the role man. Um, last year he was playing the five for Pitt. This year I think we could see him playing the four alongside Corin, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, but looking at GDG's numbers in that same role, last year he was at 1.1 points per possession. So pretty solid. Shot 47%. As that role man, but as we know, his roles, his pick and roll uh, role is not the same as Federico's was. It's not going to be the same as Corin's was. He's more of a pick and pop guy. Um, his bread and butter as a seven foot stretch shooter, uh, stretch big. So Guillermo went twenty for fifty and even forty percent on pick and pop threes last year. You'll take that any day of the week if you're Pitt. Uh, it's really an offense and just another weapon at seven feet tall to be able to hit 40% of your threes. If you can improve that volume wise and, and get more shots up on the pop. Um, I mean, honestly, even with corn in the mix now, if, if he gets 53s up again, this upcoming year and pick and pop situations, like I think you're happy if you're pit. Um, if, if you pair that again with corn on the court, uh, if you're playing Guillermo at the four, which he talked about in an interview I did, he's, he's practicing a little bit more at the four. Um, if you put him at the four corner at the five, I think it gets really tricky for defenses to choose who to guard and who to prioritize uh, in their schemes. You have Lowe and Leggett, uh, Damian Dunn, Amsel Delalic, as I said earlier, running the show. Brandon Cummings even uh, picking apart these defenses. They can create for themselves off the screens. Uh, they can find Guillermo on a pick and pop. You don't really know who's going to set the screen, but has a lot of more versatility there. This year with these two and the numbers that I just referenced, um, and then obviously they can create for themselves. They can find pit shooters on the wings, uh, Zach Austin, Delalic, and, and then find the bigs. So a lot of, a lot of opportunity this year for these guys, Guillermo and Cam. I want to look at Papa next. I, I couldn't, um, find too much on him, but he did have senior year stats from South Kent up in Connecticut on synergy as well. Um, he's coming off in the injury, as you guys all know, Capel said, um, he's doing everything but contact, but five on five right now. So hopefully we see in the next few weeks an update on him. Uh, but sounds like he should be good to go for the season in a couple months. Um, so we've got stats for Papa right here. Uh, he rated highly in three different categories, scoring off offensive rebounds, scoring in the post, and as the role man in pick and roll settings, as we just talked about with Cam and Guillermo. He shot 17 for 26, which is 65% on putbacks off of offensive rebounding opportunities and had 1.25 points per possession in these scenarios. So if he can be that at Pitt with obviously smaller volume as a freshman, redshirt freshman coming off an injury, if he can come in and, and clean up the glass, I think you'd be happy. You'd be really happy with his freshman year Papa. I, I mean, I don't expect him to be a, a post up guy, like as a, as a redshirt freshman, I don't think, I, I don't think, not trusting isn't the right way to put it. Pitt not trusting him to do that. But I think just coming off an injury uh, and the limited minutes that I assume he's going to have, at least early on, I don't think they're going to dump it down to him in the post and, and let him create um, as much as may, he may have done in his high school career. Because, um, you know, he, like I said, had pretty good numbers in it. So, um, you know, he had pretty good numbers last year or two years ago in his high school senior year career, uh, senior year of his high school career at South Kent. But um, Papa's more of a question mark just because of the injury. Don't really know what we're going to get out of him, but intriguing uh, to look at his synergy account, uh, to say the least. Um, before I get into Omdi, I, I want to reference two previous pit bigs. So something to look back at. Federico, Federico, the first guy. Um, and this is just for reference. Don't need to, um, don't mean to talk down on Federico or anything that he did. I, obviously, he was a very, very important piece to both of the last two pit teams. Um, but so let's just look at, at some of Fetty's numbers. Cutting to the basket, really good. That's where he rated the highest. Cutting to the basket. Uh, he was 24 for 32 from the field. Lots of those, I assume, were his slam dunks, uh, whether his penetration by one of the guards leading to a Fetty slam or what. Uh, he was above average at finishing off of cuts to the basket. Um, he rated good in, in synergy terms in, as the role man in pick and roll settings. Um, rolls to the basket. 1.095 points per possession. He was 18 for 26 from the field. So almost 70% uh, 
um, on rolls straight to the basket. As you guys know, he, he didn't have much of an outside game, not even a pop game at all. Um, so most of the time, the guards would find him if he was open and he could finish at the rim. Um, slips the screen, he was four for six from the field. So again, pretty pretty solid on those, not too much volume there. Um, but then you look at Fetty's post-up numbers. He only had eight possessions last year in the post-up category. Uh, went one for four from the field on those possessions. So looking at that alone, like Fetty's post-up numbers versus Corin, uh, there's a lot of opportunity here to see a different type of big. Like we haven't seen a big like Cam Corin, uh, a combination of bigs like Cam Corin and Guillermo Diaz Graham uh, in a long time around here. Like since I've been here, I haven't seen any uh, big play like that. Now, John Hughley, uh, we can look at John Hughley's numbers too. His best play type by far at Pitt in that 21 22 season when he averaged 14 points a game was post up opportunities. Uh, he ranked in the 67th percentile. He was shooting 52% in the post, 65 for 126. Most of the time on the right block, lots of time on the left block as well. Uh, but as the pick and roll man, Hughley on the other end, uh, he only hit 40% of his shots. So significantly less. Uh, than what you're looking at with Corin. Um, so if, if we're talking in the post now, like Hughley or Federico's lack of post offense, Hughley's, you know, excess post offense that he gave Pitt that we haven't seen in a while. Let's look back at Corin. Um, last year at Florida State, Corin's numbers in the post. He was 14 for 34, 41% um, in the post. So not as good as Hughley percentage-wise overall. Um, Corin was much better on the left block. Like that's something that I can't wait to watch for. Uh, his numbers were pretty, you know, glaring here. He was 11 for 19 on the left block posting up and just two for 14 on the right block posting up. He loved, if you watch his highlights, he loved to get down on that left block, um, kind of shimmy, do what he did in the post and then get to that right handed hook over the left shoulder. Uh, whether that's a hook, a, a floater, whatever you want to call it. Uh, even when he kind of stepped back a bit for a jumper, he's got a really high release on that jump shot. So should be really, really fun to watch him get down on that left block and see if he can improve on the right block as well. Uh, but Corin looks the part, man. I mean, he's got a lot of different tools here uh, when we're looking at the numbers, whether he's in the pick and roll, whether he's even popping. Like that's something that doesn't show up here that we've heard that could be really effective for him and for Pitt this year. Um, so take a look at Corin's highlights. Let me know what you guys think. I, I thought that was glaring, his post-offense. Uh, his offensive rebounding numbers and scoring off offensive rebounding numbers are also great. Uh, so, Corin, there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, then we're looking at – then lastly, we're going to look at Omdi, uh, the freshman. Um, so, he didn't have many stats last season on Synergy in high school. Um, but look at looking at two years prior, he played at Long Island Lutheran, which Alir Malouk – uh, from Imani went out there this past season, but Omni played there two seasons ago. His cut to the basket numbers were also strong, 15 for 17 from the field. So super high percentage kind of reminds you of Federico in that sense, like I just talked about. Um, but again, not much sample size here. That was a junior in high school uh, playing against high school kids. It, it's tough to really dive into Papa and Omni right now. Um, but like I talked about, man, I, I mean, the takeaways for me, the main takeaways are we are going to see a much, much different uh, offense that Pitt runs this year and that the the points, the production coming from down low, coming from the front court are really going to be uh, it's spiking up. I, I think Corin could be a 13 to 15 points per game guy, and I know they're thinking that his rebound numbers can go up too. They're not going to have him switching as much as he did at Florida State or on the perimeter. Um, Pitt's got good positional size this year, like Amsal Delalich, 6'7", playing the guard position. Zach Austin can guard guys three, two through four, I'd say. And and there's definitely a lot there for Pitt this year um, in terms of defensive opportunity, which opens up the floor on offense. Like if you can put Zach Austin out there, if you can put Guillermo and Cam next to Zach Austin or Amsal and then two guards, like that's a big lineup and you can do a lot of things defensively. You can also do a ton of things offensively. I think it's going to be really exciting to watch Cam in the post, watch Guillermo on the pops and overall watch this team play. I'm, I'm super excited also to look into the guards more um, specifically Jalen Lowe and Ish Leggett. I know Damian Dunn's the kind of guy that we're going to learn about. He had much different numbers at Temple versus Houston. So a little bit harder to, to dissect and, and see how he'll do at the ACC level. 
with, I think, more time than he had at Houston. Uh, but Jalen Lowe initially, I get really looking forward to that. Um, we'll be back with another episode soon. Let me know what you guys think. I know I bounced around a lot there. It's a Friday. I'm ready for the weekend. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, let me know what you think. Appreciate it.